friends, and welcome to the first of God Cares Ministry sermon videos. I'm Chaplain Bill Goodrich, and the song that we just heard expresses the very purpose, the very reason why I am here reaching out to you through this video. I want you to be able to have a closer walk with Jesus. Is that something you want? Me too. I so long to know him and walk close to him. Easter is fast approaching and it's a day for us to reflect on the great things that God has done for us. Two very important events took place that we are reminded of during the Easter season. First is the death of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And second is the resurrection of Jesus from the grave. The death of Jesus on the cross is what brought us salvation. And the resurrection of Jesus from the grave gives us assurance that God is able to give his children eternal life. All of what Jesus did and Jesus himself is our gift from God. And so what I would like to do now is just to take a moment to pray and ask God to speak to us through his word. Let's bow our hearts before him. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your love given to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you that you care about us, that you have good in store for us. And though there are times that we experience darkness and, and difficulty that we don't even understand why it's happening, Lord, we know that you love us and that you are with us always, that you never leave us and you never forsake us. Speak to us as we share your word today. Help us to hear what you have to say. Help us to understand what you are telling us because our hearts are open to you through Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I'd like to begin with a few songs. Why don't we begin with the song or the hymn, Amazing Grace. The grace of God is so great, it's the favor of God. And it is amazing for all of us who have experienced it. So let's sing it, Amazing Grace.
Let's sing another hymn, In the Garden. In the Garden. What great hymns those are. And I thank God that we have the opportunity to sing them. I'd like to begin today by looking at a verse that's very familiar for most of us. It's in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, and verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, a couple questions come out of this verse for me that I want to share with you. And the first is, why would God need to send his only begotten son? What was the purpose for God to do that? And second, why do we need to believe in him? Or how important is it to believe in Jesus? And when we speak of believing, are we only saying or only speaking of acknowledging him? Or is there more? Is there something more to believing in Jesus than just believing that he existed or that God did send him? You know, Jesus came to accomplish an extremely important task. And, and it, it was to atone for our sins and, and also to establish a way for us to be in right relationship with God. In the very beginning of the world, God created man and placed him in the Garden of Eden. It was paradise. But what was paradise like? I believe that the colors, the sounds, the smells, the atmosphere was so amazingly beautiful, beyond words, something that we've never experienced. Our best day on earth, our most beautiful uh, scene that we've ever seen in this uh, world does not compare to what God had given Adam to live in. Now, there was something even greater, though, than all these beautiful scenes and, and experiences that he had. The greatest aspect of, of paradise with Adam was that he used to have companionship with God. He used to walk with God in the garden. He knew God, and God knew him, and they had fellowship that was harmonious. It was beautiful. God gave man a wife. We know her as Eve. And God gave man dominion over the garden. But God also gave him one rule, and that rule was, Do not eat from the tree 
of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you do, you shall die. Both Adam and Eve disobeyed God. It's interesting, though, because we read that Adam lived for hundreds of years after this event. They, they had children, but God said they would die if they ate the fruit. The death that God spoke of was not a physical death, although it, it turned into a physical death eventually, but the death that immediately took place was a spiritual death. The fellowship between man and God was destroyed by that sin. Both Adam and Eve disobeyed, and that day sin entered into the soul of mankind, and the result is spiritual death for all of their descendants, which of course includes you and I. This one sin destroyed the spiritual life that Adam knew. The life of unity and harmony with God, the fellowship, the joy, the contentment, the peace that Adam knew all the time was destroyed. And this is called spiritual death, separation from God. Adam and Eve were removed from the garden. The, garden was, the ground was cursed. Physical pain and struggle was introduced and the devil was given access to man's soul. And ever since then, the devil has had influence in the thoughts of mankind. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His son came to atone for our sin to reestablish this relationship with God. It's so important to realize that the forgiveness of sin is not just a uh, tonic, if you will, to cool off God's temper. God is not so messed up by sin that he's up in heaven wringing his hands, thinking, oh no, they sinned again, they did another sin, or you or I have just made them mad again. Sin. Is, is, does not have that control over God. The reason that God hates sin is because sin separates us from God. And we cannot be in God's presence. There cannot be a harmonious relationship with God when there's sin between us. The, the devil knew that just one sin would cause this separation. And spiritual death and so he tempted Adam and Eve and what happened they they caved in they compromised and that one sin created that separation the devil is still doing this today he wants to keep you and I from God and he's always tempting us to do what is wrong not because the devil likes us or he wants to have fellowship with us. No, it's because the devil wants you and me to sin because he hates God and he wants to do harm to God by separating us from him. Sin is what separates us from God. Now, let me explain it this way. Sin or, or, or God is light. And sin is darkness. Now, if I were to say, I brought a box of darkness here for us to have today, and I pull the box of darkness out, and I open the lid, what's going to happen to that darkness? If it were dark inside the box, pitch dark, as soon as I open it, the light in this room would destroy the darkness. And that's what happens with sin in God's presence. And because sin is in our soul, and our soul is what connects and communicates with God, our souls cannot be with God until that sin is removed. Yet, God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son. And his only begotten son, Jesus, knew when he left heaven that the ultimate completion of his assignment from the Father was to atone for our sins by dying on the cross. So Jesus came into this world. He was born of the Virgin Mary by the Holy Spirit. He grew up in Nazareth when he was about 30 years old, he started his ministry of making disciples. After um, he taught his disciples God's ways, he came to a point where, oh, let me just say, he taught his disciples God's ways, and there were two main commandments that he gave us. First was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And the second, or, and he actually combined these as one because they are so important. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. In doing this, we fulfill all the commandments of God. We fulfill the will of God. Our love for God, our love for one another is the most important aspect of following Jesus. So, before we could do that, and before that even mattered, something else had to happen. And that was our sins needed to be atoned for. Because no matter how good I am, no matter how good we are, being good is not what removes our sin. It is the atonement of Jesus, his blood, that removes our sin. Okay? So this is what happened when... After three years of spending this time with his disciples, Jesus began to explain to them that he had to go to Jerusalem and experience this terrible death. That he was in, let me just give you two examples from Scripture. One is from Luke chapter 9, verse 22. It says, Jesus told them, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and he must be killed, and on the third day raised to life. And then in another place, we find in Matthew, it says, Now, as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside and said to them, We are going to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priest and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death, and will turn him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. On the third day, he will be raised to life. On several occasions, Jesus explained this to his disciples, but they didn't understand it. It was kind of a mystery. You know, Jesus spoke in parables a lot of times, and he used symbolic words about heaven that were not always easy to understand. And so when he was saying these things, they weren't really sure what he was talking about. And... Um, uh, even today, many, of, many people do not understand. It is hard to understand. Why would God send his only begotten son to give his life in the most cruel death that could be devised in that day and time? And uh, we may not ever really understand that totally, but our salvation comes through this atoning sacrifice of Jesus, but it is also through our faith. We must believe. The scripture says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And this is how God showed his love for us. He gave us his one and only son that we might live through him. Not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sins. In the book of Romans, it says, God demonstrates his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And finally, I want to say that Jesus told us in John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. No one takes it from him. No one takes it from me, he said, but I lay it down on my own accord. 
So let's look at John 3.16 once again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him, that whosoever believes in him, believes. What does this word believes mean? That we just acknowledge that it happened? No. Believing in Jesus is coming to the place of recognizing that he is from God. He is the Son of God. And we begin to rely on his words. We hold to what Jesus has taught us. We rely on him for the strength and the capacity to do what he says. Whatever he said to us, whatever he directed us, whatever he promised, whatever he commanded, he's our Lord and we believe him enough to follow his teachings. And this is the pivotal point. This is the pivotal point for all people. We have to come to this place of believing for whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life, everlasting life. And without that faith, we cannot have that blessing. When Jesus was on the cross, some of his last words were this, it is finished. When Jesus spoke those words, he was saying, his mission, his responsibility, or his calling from God, the reason he was sent, he completed the task. Actually, he completed it with perfection. Jesus stopped at nothing necessary to complete the mission God gave us, gave him. Now we have something to do, and that something is that we need to believe in Jesus. Nothing can wash away my sin except for the atoning blood of Jesus. Every single one of your sins, friends, can be forgiven. In fact, every single one of your sins must be forgiven in order for that relationship that God desires to have with us, with you, in order for that relationship to take place, your sins must be forgiven. And there's only one way that that can happen. Whether they are small sins, whether they are great sins, every single one of them must be washed away. Why don't we take some time and sing a few hymns? I'd like us to sing, if you would, this, the hymn, Softly and Tenderly. Calling, calling 
Another hymn I'd like for us to sing, and it is called There is Power in the Blood. Let's sing that song. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power. Magnificent truths are found in those hymns. And now, friends, as we conclude, I want to ask you, are you willing to give your sins to Jesus so that you can be completely forgiven and enter into this eternal relationship with our Heavenly Father? Perhaps you've already confessed your sins and have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you know the joy and the, the blessing it is to be one with God, to be his child. Perhaps you feel that your sins are too great, that uh, they're just too many. Or, or maybe you, you've confessed your sins in the past and you began to walk with Jesus, but something happened that you strayed away and you feel like you're not worthy. Friends, None of us are worthy of the very Son of God leaving the most amazing place that can, cannot even be imagined by us, heaven, and coming to this world and spending 33 years and going through great trials and tribulations, not only at his death and through the interrogation and, and beatings that he took for us, but all through his life, he experienced every temptation that we have experienced, yet was without sin. That Jesus loves you and is calling you to confess all your sins because his blood will wash away every single one of them. I, I just want to assure you that, that Jesus loves you and that Jesus died for every one of your sins. I have something here. I, I made this uh, today and uh, every one of us are familiar, I think, with writing checks. You've written checks to uh, pay for different things in our lives and in your lives. And uh, I uh, think about, you know, when that check is given to the cashier, if it's valid, that cashier takes it and you take the goods he or she takes the check and the transaction is sealed. I have a check here and I, I made this and uh, I, it's a, uh, to give us an idea of what it's like 
for our sins to be washed away. First of all, this is a blank check. How would you like to have a blank check for every single one of your sins? The blank check was made out by Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The date that you cash it is today. Here, pay to the order of, this is where you put your name, okay? And this is the amount of sins. For some, you may only know of a few. For me, it was many. I hardly had room for mine, but there was enough room. Whether it's a thousand, a million, a trillion, a hundred trillion, there's room for you to put your sins on the line for Jesus to pay in full. The memo here says, Jesus loves you, and it's signed by Jesus, your Savior. Now, I know this is just a piece of paper, but it does represent your choice. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. Oh, what a blessing. Would you pray with me? I'm going to put up on the screen here the words of a prayer that I would suggest you pray. I want to read these for you first. And then after I read them, if you would like, you can bow your heart before God Almighty and pray this prayer with me. Our Father in heaven, thank you for your love and for sending Jesus to rescue us. Jesus, I believe you are Lord and that you are risen from the dead by God's power. Cleanse me from all my sins, Jesus, and come into my heart that I may be born of God. I surrender my will to follow you, Lord. Grant me the grace to walk and talk with you now and forevermore. Friend, if you think this is a good prayer for you, would you pray it with me out loud? Pray it with your own lips, your own voice. Our Father in heaven, thank you for your love and for sending Jesus to rescue us. Jesus, I believe you are Lord and that you are risen from the dead by God's power. Cleanse me from all my sins, Jesus, and come into my heart that I may be born of God. I surrender my will to follow you, Lord. Grant me the grace to walk and talk with you now and forevermore. Amen. Have you prayed that prayer? You meant it from your heart and you are my brother or sister. We are together, God's children. What a gift. This is what Easter is all about, the atonement of our sins. The next video that I'll be sharing with you is the second part of an important aspect of Easter. And that is that not only did Jesus die for our sins and was buried in a tomb, but three days after his burial, a miraculous thing took place. Jesus rose from the dead, and that's very significant for us. And I want to talk to you about that next time we're together. Until then, go in peace. And remember, God is love.
praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every Let the peace.